be seated. I'm so glad to be back again tonight into this uh, Chautauqua, I believe they call it. And anyhow, at this time, it's the house of God. For here's where we are gathering together for his services. And I was so happy after I got home last night to find out that there was so many come and got saved. That's what we are here for, mainly, is to get sinners saved. Now, I'd like to say to those young, newborn Christians tonight, you find you a good church somewhere that preaches the full gospel, that believes in divine healing and believes in the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And there you find you a good church of your choice. And then settle down there and be a real servant to Christ. Tell the pastor you got saved over here and... And he'll be glad to receive you into his fellowship of the saints. And that's the way you, you grow in the statue of Christ, is to have fellowship with all the saints of the living God. Now, we're expecting tomorrow night to be a great night. It's usually the anticipation, the people's waiting. Tomorrow afternoon... Our good brother and friend, Brother Grummet Toms from South Africa, is going to have a little missionary rally on the ground here. His brother Sullivan had just told me that it's going, it's announced. Now, I know this brother real well. He's a fine boy. And uh, he's away from home. He's an Afrikaans. And I know how it feels to be treated good when you're an alien. But he's just an alien in the nation. He's a brother with us in Christ, with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And when he come over here, he lightened up my church down there by taking one of my girls away for his wife. <laughs> one of my deacon's daughter is his wife, a lovely Christian girl. They certainly made a good pair, and they was married and now on the field to preach the gospel. And this young missionary is going to spend his life in his home country in Africa. He knows the tribes. You'll probably hear him testify tomorrow afternoon of our African meeting. What the Lord did, how 30,000 raw heathens come to Christ at one altar call. I uh, standing there when it happened around 100, 150,000 at the Durban racetrack. And when they seen the power of the Lord God to take an insane man walking on his hands and feet with a chain around his neck. And in one moment's time made him a perfect normal man. 30,000 people surrendered their lives to Jesus Christ. And the next morning while I was sitting in the hotel, the mayor of the city, Sidney Smith, had been down to see me. And I heard something coming down the street. I looked out and there were seven big cattle truck loads or coming down the street of wheelchairs and crutches and sticks and clubs and cots that they had picked them up on the field. There was 25,000 miracles performed at one time immediately after all them come to Christ. 25,000 cripples, blinds, twisted. And the next morning they were going down the street, the people who was in them the day before, and a great long procedure, the police leading it, and these big trucks just piled all running over the top with wheelchairs, cots, stretchers, clubs, and those people walking behind different tribes, 14, 15 different tribes, walking behind that was in them cots the day before with their hands in the air singing their native language, all things are possible, only believe. Oh, I sat in the window, I wept like a baby. They didn't need nothing else. They were just four people ever got to the platform. One of them was a woman which was a Hindu. 
with her dot between her eyes. And she, I said, you're a Hindu and why do you come to me as a Christian? She said, I believe you can help me. And through the interpreter. And so I said, well, why would you come to Jesus? Why don't you go to Muhammad? And she said, I believe that you can help me. I said, well, if he will reveal to me what's your trouble, will you believe it's the Jesus of the New Testament? She said, I've read the New Testament and I will believe it. For that's what he said he would do. And I looked at her again and the Holy Spirit was merciful. I said, you have a cyst on the womb. You was at the doctor the other day and your husband's a short, stout man with a mustache and he wears a gray suit. The doctor said you had a cyst and must be operated on. She said, that is the truth and I now accept Jesus as my personal Savior. A Mohammed. 10,000 Mohammeds out there looking at it. Great staunch Mohammeds. The next was a white woman. Told her to prepare for death for she wasn't going to live and she had a little tumor on the breast. She walked down and lived about 20 minutes and dropped dead with a heart attack in the meeting. And then this very next morning, a woman that had been pronounced dead by the doctors was brought back to life by prayer. See, you can't heal. You can only say what God says, say. And then Brother Grummet will tell you about it probably tomorrow. And when this final act of this man there, not even in his right mind, thought, I want him to do a dance with his hands like the tourist clown. And when I said, well, if I could heal him and would not do it, I'd be an awful person. I cannot heal that poor man. But his life cannot be hid if the Holy Spirit will reveal it to me. And then I asked them, told them what Jesus was and what he did. He did not heal. He said, I only do as the Father shows me. Then when that man was, the Spirit showed that he was raised in a Christian home. And said all about him and every bit of it was the truth. And his father and mother stood up about a half a city block across the track and witnessed that was true. Then I was going to pass him on. I seemed like a shadow. I looked in that shadow and there he stood on his feet normally. There wasn't enough demons and torment can stop that. So I said, how many here, Mohammeds and all, will receive Jesus as personal Savior if God will make that man stand up on his feet and be normal and well? Just as far as you can see, the hands. They had to fence them off because they had tribal wars among themselves. But when God healed the man, he stood up, not only healed in his body, never had walked up like that before in his life, he was in his right mind. Looking around, the tears dropping off of his cheeks onto his naked belly, splattering like that. Thousands raised their hands and we estimated with a low estimation of 30,000 came to the Lord Jesus at that one time. Then I said, if you believe it, God is here to answer prayer. All you that sick need not to go any farther, for the God of heaven has been here to tell you Mohammeds, to tell you Zulus and Shungais and Bazuta, and all you tribes here through your man that's on the platform here that he's present. Will you accept it? Have faith in God while I pray and offer a prayer and 25,000 outstanding miracles taking place with one prayer. Now, you can wonder why it's hard to preach in America when something like that can take place. And at Bombay, India, they estimated nearly a half a million there. And there was no way of telling how they could only let me stay three days because there's no place to take care of the peoples. That's why we're here in America now waiting for the hour and when we can cross the seas again where we can go into those people and... The offerings and so forth that we get all over the expenses goes directly to that cause. Then when we get there at the judgment bar, you'll see that that's the truth. That everything that we have done with reverence, we put it to the kingdom of God every cent that we can and live as meager as we possibly can do. So that the kingdom of God, I do not believe that we ought to be building three or four million dollar churches and preaching Jesus is coming and man on the field preaching the gospel with no shoes on them. It's not right. My brothers is on the field. The other day on an investigation, the fellow said, you buy your suits from pennies and pay $17. I said, that's right. So well, you could afford better suits than that. I said, not when my brothers are eating two meals a week, no shoes on their feet, preaching the gospel that I'm standing for. I can't afford any better than that. 
It's exactly right. We have no right. No, sir, we have no right to blow millions for big buildings that almost margs anyhow. And millions are dying that don't even know Jesus Christ as Savior and crying and begging to receive it. And we put a big church up on this corner and proselyte this one on the other corner over here, make fun of them and tell them they're all wrong. Millions of such things are going on and millions dying yearly that never heard the name of Jesus one time. While we're fussing, they're dying over there without knowing Christ and God's going to hold us responsible for it in that day. Well, that wasn't my text. I, I just can't help from saying those things. So you, you come to hear Brother Tom's tomorrow. He's here in a building somewhere, somewhere. I know he is, he and his wife. And Yes, Brother Grummet, I'm certainly glad to see him and his little wife there. And they'll be here at 2, is it? 2.30 tomorrow afternoon. The Lord bless you. Before we read the word, let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. And I might say this before I pray. If the Lord willing, I want to preach tomorrow night, if the Lord willing, on as the eagle stirs its nest. Lord, you are our only hope. The only means of salvation. And we are so glad, Lord, when we think about overseas. To the millions setting in darkness, worshiping animals. And they're worshiping images made of mud and a stone. Sprinkled with blood of fowls and animals. Seeking for mercy breaking their bones and cutting their faces and trying to find peace. And here in our own lovely land, Jesus Christ has been so good to us to give us peace and we can hardly get the people to walk across the street to receive it. No wonder judgment is hanging in the hangers. Oh God, we would pray tonight that you'd be merciful to us. And we pray for our brother Tom's as he and his little wife crosses the sea. May he be anointed with the Holy Ghost to bring mercy and peace to those that are setting in darkness. Bless this young couple, Lord, as they're yet youthful and can stand the wear of the jungle. We pray that you'll be with them. We pray tonight, Lord, that you'll give a burning vision to we Americans, especially we who call ourselves Christians, that the need is so great. Oh, Lord, send us mercy. And we pray that missionaries and men and women that are called to the fields will hurry quickly for the hours coming when communism is swallowing them countries up and they'll not be privileged to preach the gospel. While the door is open, may every missionary-minded person either go or support somebody that can go. And Lord, we would ask now that you'd remember our nation tonight and our people. And we pray for our churches Many times we have to scold them, Lord, and sometimes don't understand why we do it, but it's the working of the Holy Spirit to bring us, uh, shake us, and let us know that the need is great. We ask to bless our churches. May these coming weekend be great days, and may this community through here literally be shook by the power of God. And an old-fashioned revival come. Grant it, Lord, bless all the ministers that are here tonight. And our precious brother Sullivan, who has labored and helped and tried and put ever effort. You see all these things for you. Your eyes on the sparrow. And we pray now that as we read the word that you'll send the Holy Spirit to interpret it to us. 
May souls be saved and sick people be healed and backsliders be reclaimed again into the kingdom of God. And may those who are seeking the Holy Ghost find this is the application and be saved and filled with the Spirit. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to read from two different places tonight. A verse out of each psalm. Psalms 46, 1 and Psalms 119, 56. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. And then in 119, 59... I thought on my ways and turned my feet to thy testimonies. This psalm is believed by the clergy and by the historians that David cried out this when his house was being watched by Saul and his soldiers. And he knew that when he went out the door in daylight, there might be a spear or a dart or an arrow driven through his back or between the buckler pieces on his shields of his breast. And I can see David as he paced back and forth up and down in the floor, wringing his hands walking to and fro in his house. For he was in trouble. And usually it's when men are in trouble that they turn to God. I've heard many people laugh and say, there is no God. But when they get in trouble, that's the first thing they think of doing is calling on him. Unnoted infidel, Bob Ingersoll. It is said that when he was in the hospital room dying, and he knew that he was going to go out of this life soon, when death struck him, he screamed and said, Oh God, if there be a God, have mercy on my soul advised his children not to go the way he went, but take the route that mother had went. You'll think of it sometime or other. Some years ago, I was talking to the judge of our city. And he's a good friend of mine. He comes up to my church once in a while. And I was down there to see him about a young boy who had stole in a car and his mother laid on my steps nearly all night and the next morning she said brother Branham she said judge will listen to you she said ask for mercy for my son well that's the least I could do and the next morning I went down to the office and I knocked on the door and a man opened the door and he said the judge is busy I said all right, tell him I'd like to see him in a few moments. He heard my voice. He said, come in, Brother Branham. And he said, what can I do for you? And I give him the story. He said, Brother Branham, that boy is not his first time. This is about five times for him. And I said, but judge, he told me if you would give him one more chance, he'd come up to church and come to Sunday school and make a report every Sunday. He said, Brother Branham, every man that I have to sentence to penitentiary is going to be a preacher until he gets out. That's the way it is. We try to make God all kinds of promises when we're in trouble. But when we get out of trouble, then we forget all about it. Israel was the same way. 
When Israel got in trouble, when it got away from God, and when anyone gets away from God, any nation, any people, any church, troubles in the way. And when they'd leave God for a season and get in trouble, they'd always scream out to God and kill sacrifices and do honor to God until God came and helped them and then forget Him again. That just slays in human beings seemingly to do that. Looks like they enjoy coming to the Lord, but it's so quickly forgotten. While we have seen the hand of God enough in this meeting here to remember till the day we die if we should live another 50 to 100 years to remember what God has done for us. David later cried, I'll bind thy commandments on my bedpost. I'll honor thy statues. And all when he's seen the goodness of God. But you know, the psalmist said again that God is our refuge, a very present help in a time of trouble. So it's good to know God, find God, get on speaking terms with Him while there's nothing wrong. Then in the time of trouble, He's a very present help. In the time of trouble. Not long ago, I was talking to an evangelist. And he said one of the strangest things happened. He said a, a young colored boy had come to him a few nights before to be saved. And said he just never waited for altar call. Said when I got to the pulpit, he walked right straight up and he said, Parson, I want to accept Jesus as my personal Savior. And he said, certainly, son. I'm very happy to... Here you say that and to pray with you, but what is the sudden change? What's happened? Have you ever been to church much? I said, no, sir, I haven't. He said, I've been more or less a vagabond. He said, and about six months ago, I'd wandered way up in the state of Maine and said, I was out on a little lonely road walking and I'd gotten hungry and I was out of money and said, I hired out to some pulp cutters. And said, they told me you might help. We got a colored woman washing dishes or cooking. You might wash dishes for her. And said, he told them, well, that's all right. I don't care what to do. I want to work a while. And they said, we'll feed you and give you so much. So he said, about two nights after he had been there, he just washed the dishes and had been laying down in the bed thinking. Between his room and the old lady's room, there's a piece of canvas that's hung up. She had a lantern sitting on a box and said that he heard two men outside talking and he began to hear a real funny noise taking place, a real mournful rumbling noise. And said, one of the men said to the other, and those great big husky woodmen, said, Jim, we better go on down to the cabin, for we may be blowed off the face of the earth in the next few minutes. Said it alarmed him. And he'd had his head under the cover, said he threw the little blanket back, and what could be going wrong? But said in a few minutes, the lightning began to flash in the window. And said he got up and looked out the window and said one of those great tornadoes that hit that country was a winding through the timbers just a little ways ahead. And said, he said, what if it would strike this place within himself? And said the old auntie in the next room said, knocked on the little canvas and said, son... Come over here. Said, I've got a lantern lit. Said, I went over into her room and she took hold my hand and she said, Young fella, are you a Christian? Said, No, ma'am, I'm not. 
Well, said, you better get down here now. For within the next few minutes, this little cabin of that hurricane stays in this path will be blown into pieces. He said she dropped down by the side of that old soapbox. And he said, I never heard anyone pray with such coolness. She talked to somebody that she'd talked to before, he said. And he said, she didn't seem to mind if the cabin blowed away. But said, all of a sudden, limbs begin to hit the cabin. Trees uprooting and falling in. And the minister said, did you pray? He said, no, sir. I was too scared to pray. Said, I didn't know but what the next one fell would take me. But this one thing I said, Lord, if you be merciful to me, when I get out of here, I'm going to know you as my Savior. He said, that's what I'm here for now. For I don't know when I'll hit another storm like that. And he wanted to come while he was in his right mind. And while he could think and when he could pray and when he could think for himself and get in contact with God. I do believe there is a deathbed repentance. But don't you depend on it. For it might be I've seen many on the side of the road in wrecks. Glass drove through their bodies and some shot in a bullet through them. I'd run to them quickly. I'd say, you're a Christian. no. And can't pray. Don't you take a chance on it. For now God is our refuge. And our strength. And he's a very present help in trouble. Think on your ways now. Some time ago. I kind of took advantage of a little trip. I just got married. I see my wife sitting there looking at me. And we had just got married and I was going to take her on a little honeymoon. We'd saved up a few nickels and I was going up to Niagara Falls and I thought while I was that close to the Adirondack, I might as well get a little hunting in. So I took her with me hunting. And so when I was... So when I was... Put her in a little lean to and the ranger was coming up the next day up on Hurricane Mountain in the Adirondack. My mother's a part Indian. And I thought I was too much of a woodsman to ever be turned around. So I told her, I said, now, Meaty, Billy was with her then, about five years old. And I said, his mother, you know, is dead. And so I said, now, you have my dinner ready. I'll be back about noon. I'm going down here. There's a bear using that side of the mountain and I'm going down. Well, I got on the trail of that bear and I kept on going and went over a few more hills and a few more hills. And after a while I looked across and I seen a great big buck just what I was looking for for that fall. I shot the deer and I said, say, look at here, there's a storm coming. And if anyone ever hunted and know what a storm means in the mountains, you just better sit down. But I couldn't sit down. I had a wife and baby. And they was in the woods for the first time in life. In a little lean-to while they'd freeze to death. It would go ten below that night. And that storm coming, it might last two or three days. And my wife's the biggest coward I ever seen in the woods. And she'd be scared to death. So I thought I must go back. So I got my gun up real quick and I put on my coat and I started up a little drain that I come down and I walked. The fog was coming low and the wind down low. And I said, oh, I know how to get out of here. I'll just go straight back up over the side of the hill and go right over to the camp. There's no over five miles from here. So I walked and I walked and I said, where did I turn off at here? And the first thing you know, I stopped and I was standing by the side of my deer. I started again and I come back to the same place. I started again going one certain way and come back to the same place. Now the Indian calls that the death walk. You're walking in a circle. 
You'd never get out of that. So, and I'd come over, I knew I'd crossed over the mountain some way and got into the, what's called the giants. It was flat. But which way could I go back? How did I get away from that circle? Well, I got nervous. And I said, now, wait a minute, Billy. You're too good a woodsman to be lost talking to myself. You know you know how to get out of here. You must know. Media will die, and so will Billy. And you must go out of here. I said, sure. I know how to get out. I'll just go right up here and turn off and go over. I started walking, and I got more nervous, and I knowed I was lost. And the fog was almost as low as that curtain. And I blowing through there, just snow and fog and wind. And I knew it was going to be a problem to get out of there. And I started, I said, now when I come over the mountain, the wind was in my face, so I'm going right straight back with the wind. And I had the wind to my back, and it was in my face, and I started off that way. And when I did, I heard something, quote, this scripture, which came to me this afternoon. God is a, a very present help in a time of trouble. He is our refuge and our strength. I uh, just kept walking on. And then it kept getting louder and louder. Oh, I said, I'm imagining that. I said, now I know I'm getting nervous. When anyone's lost any amount of time, they get a fever. And then they start running, get out of their head, fall over a cliff or something and kill themselves. And so I knew that was what was happening to me, that I was going to get a, that fever coming on me because I was thinking of my wife. Ordinarily, I'd have found a little place and pulled in, got me a porcupine or something, and that would have been it until the storm was over. But I couldn't think for them. They were going to die. And I said, I must get to them. So I said, I'm getting nervous now. So I'll know this is the way I'm going right straight this way. And something kept saying... God is our refuge, and He is a present help in the time of trouble. So I said, now I must be cracking up. I'm losing my mind now because I'm hearing that in my ears. And I said, it can't be. I'm going right. I know I'm right. I'm too good a woodsman to be lost. I just kept going. I said, I know directions. And I'm not lost. Sometimes people like to kid themselves like that today by joining a church. Don't kid yourself. You better be lined up right. God is our refuge and strength and a present help in the time of troubles. And as I walked on, I thought, here I know I'm going wrong because I'm turning right back around this way again, and I realized that I was lost. Oh, that's a horrible feeling, to be lost. So I said, I admit, Lord, but I'm no woodsman. I'll have to trust you. I took my hat off, knelt down on it, and set my rifle aside the tree. And I said, Lord, I am lost. I'm not worthy to live, but she and Billy is worthy of living. I brought him into the woods, not for my sake, Lord, but for their sake. Drag me out of these woods, Lord, for I'm lost and I don't know where I am, and you're the only one can help me. This late November, this storm may last for days. I got up. Pull my hat back out and put it on my head. I said, now, no, as a Christian, I'll follow just one direction. And I'll go on. And I started walking on. I said, now, this is my idea. I'm going straight this way. That's the way I feel to go. And as I started walking, all of a sudden, something laid its hands on me. You may say, Brother Branham, you just thought that. No, I didn't. I felt it. So much that I turned. And when I turned, it must have been God. 
For the fog cleared away far enough for me to see. I was going directly from Hurricane Mountain. I saw the tower behind me where the ranger stayed. But he wasn't there in that time of year. I was going straight into Canada. Oh, I turned quickly towards the direction that I seen the tower in. I know I couldn't move. I had to go over cliffs and everything to get to it. But at least six or seven miles in that storm, what could have pulled back that fog but the hand of God? If anyone was ever in a storm in the mountains, why it's so thick you can hardly sometimes see your hands before you. And for miles it cleared back just for a spare of a moment and I'd had my back turned to it but something laid their hands on me and caused me to turn to see what it was. He's a very present help in a time of trouble. When I got my bearings, I took off my hat and I said, God, I've served you some ten years or better now. I'll serve you till I die. Direct me, O oh Lord, to that tower. I had to keep my course. That's the way it is. When God saves you, you've got to keep your course towards Calvary. Amen. Don't you turn right or left. I seen on top of that mountain, there was that little ranger's cabin. where, And I know if I got to that, there's a telephone line run all the way down about six miles down the mountain until it got to the little lean-to, right where we were at because the cabin was close to the lean-to. It wasn't open yet. He was coming up later to hunt with me. Well, I, over the hills, up over shale rock, sliding, cutting myself, it got dark because I'd been walking around it about nearly 4.30 that afternoon then. And it got dark and I couldn't see no more. Storm twisting and blowing and animals are running. I had to walk with my hand up because I know I tacked that line on the tree just about that high. And I know if I was in the right direction, my hand would finally hit that line. And I'd keep this hand up, the snow would go down. It blizzard and freezing way up high on the mountain. My arm would be so cold and numb. And I'd have to stop, put my rifle in this hand to get it warm, put it under my coat, and then reach back so I'd be sure I didn't cross it. Raise my hand up again and start walking. Darker and darker and is getting... I know my wife would be frantically. Finally, I thought I'd lost the way. And I stopped many times. But after a while, I, I'd hit a, something. I'd stop. It'd be a branch. I'd pull it. It'd be a branch. I'd raise my hand again and start again. That's the way you go to Calvary with both hands up hollering for mercy. God directs you. You don't know how I felt when my hand hit something. I pulled on it and it was a wire. I knowed I could hold to that wire. It would lead me to my loved ones. What a feeling it was to know that God had helped me. That was a relief. I know that I was saved then. But it wasn't nothing like the thrill it was. One night when I held my hands in the air. Until something else touched my hand and my heart was a wire of the Holy Spirit that tells me that the end of this road, my loved ones and Savior, is awaiting. As I thought on my ways, I wasn't a hunter. I wasn't a woodsman. God was my refuge and my strength. Like the prodigal son, when he was in the pig pen... And he came to himself. He began to think on his ways. The way he had treated his father. The way he had treated others. And he came to himself. And as he thought on his ways, he said, I will arise and go to my father. And say, I'm not worthy to be your child. Make me one of your hard servants. As he thought on his ways, he turned towards the father's house. It was Job, the patriarch. Not only did he think on his own ways, he thought on his children's ways. He thought this, 
when his young boys and girls was out having their parties, he said, prevent you, they might have sinned. And I'll offer a burnt offering for them anyhow. He thought on his children's ways. I'm telling you, if more American mothers and fathers would think on their children's ways instead of sending them out to these rock and roll parties and dances and shindigs, they'd be a better nation. Amen. Job said, if they have sinned, I'll offer an offering for them. And when trouble struck him, he could say, I know my Redeemer liveth, and at the last days he'll stand on the earth. Though the skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh I'll see God. Though he slay me, yet I'll trust him. For he thought on his ways that God was a present help in the time of trouble. It was the patriarch David when he was sitting before the prophet Nathan. And Nathan revealed to him his own sinful ways. And when David began to think on his ways, he had taken that lovely friend of his, Uriah, took the pretty Bathsheba, his wife, and she was then to be mother, and tried to get him to come in and live with his wife so he could lay it on to her, that it was his baby, or lay it, say it was Uriah's child. But Uriah, that gallant soldier, being yet only a proselyte, he was a Gentile, a Hatite. But he said, God forbid me to go down with my wife in the ark of my God on the battlefield. When I cross the line between this life and that one there, I want to shake your eye's hand. He was a real man. God forbid my brothers out there in the ark of my God on the battlefield and me go down and live with my wife and my brothers out there. David had Joab to take him to the battlefront and withdraw from him and he died under the enemy's power. The sun went down holding the shield. When Nathan the prophet revealed it to him and told him, David, thou art the rich man. David thought on his ways and that he knowed his sins wasn't hid before God. And it brought him to sackcloth and he wept bitterly in sackcloth and ashes. Sure, when you think on your way. It was Jacob, the patriarch, who had told a lie and had made a hypocrite out of himself to steal the birthrights of his brother. He had been fair and presumptuously a long time, but he began to think about going home. There might be many in here tonight is thinking about going home. Old age is catching up with you. Sickness has got you in a grip. Better think on your ways before you get there. And as Jacob, on his way with his wife and his children, he heard a message coming that Esau with a great army was coming to meet him. And he began to think on his ways. The way he had done Esau, cheated him. And it drove him to prayer all night long. He wrestled with the angel of the Lord. I trust tonight that men and women, boys and girls, who's neglected the baptism of the Holy Ghost, you don't know how near you are to home. I trust that you'll put purpose in your heart, that you'll wrestle with the angel of the Lord and not let him go until you're a blessed. When the angel of the Lord touched Jacob, he walked different from then on. He was a big, fine, running coward on one side, but a limping prince on the other side of the brook. You walk different. You think different. He wasn't afraid to meet Esau then because he had wrestled with the angel. Think on your ways. It was Moses who was living peacefully, marrying the Sheik of Midia's daughter, Zephyrah. And while he was out there herding the sheep, one day on the back side of the desert was a familiar old path. He is walking down, herding the sheep at peace. Israel was in bondage under slavery. He was thinking on his ways. This is not my job as a sheep herder. God called me to be a preacher. 
How do I know that I'm not preaching to a Moses tonight? It's out there in the steel factory or down here at the pump factory or out there driving a truck somewhere that God hasn't commissioned you to save souls. Instead of doing it, you've got you a job to make your daily bread. Living in ease and thousands of souls going into destruction. How do I know that I'm not preaching to a man or a woman that's called to the mission fields and yet you're selling that birthright for a morsel of bread? Come to yourself. Think on your ways. See, what will it gain you? What will you prosper by? If you gain the whole world and lose your soul, what have you done? Think on your ways. And as Moses began to think on his ways, I'm a murderer. I'm a coward. God called me to be a preacher. He's, I was born to peculiar birth. I was hid in the bulrushes. I'll never forget my mother's story when she told me that God had called me. I had the message in my heart. But I got so much theology in me while I tried to do it my own way. But still there's a God somewhere He had never spared my life. While He was thinking on His ways, He had to look sideways and there was a burning bush to answer Him. God have mercy. There's a burning bush here tonight to answer every runner away from a call of God. Think on your ways, the Holy Ghost. He's sure to heal the sick, showing signs and wonders and miracles. Many of you people have wanted to be a Christian. Many of you have wanted to do something for God. And you've neglected it for the wash tub, for a job out there in a factory somewhere. Some of you women ought to be home with your kids, reading the Bible to them. You got a job out here to make an extra dollar. Shame on you. God give you a job that's raised them children. Teach them the things of God. It's the truth. Think on your ways, woman. What will them dollars do? They'll ring like Judas's carriage did. Think on your ways and turn your foot to his testimonies, unto his blood, unto his grace, unto his offer. As I thought on my ways, said David, I turn my feet to thy testimony. Sure, think on your ways as you go. Notice, Moses thought on his ways. And he turned his feet to the testimonies of the Lord. And God blessed him and gave him a call. Renewed his vows. Done all the things that he had promised and made him a great deliverer. There may be one soul that God has called you to save. But you're not doing it. How do you know who that soul is? Look at the little old washwoman up here in Kentucky. I believe it was. That had a calling in her heart. To have a revival in the town back in the early Methodist days. And when she did, she rented an old livery stable. She washed clothes until she got enough money to rent the livery stable. She cleaned it out, put her own wash bench down, tucked some tracks down, hired an old preacher to come preach. The old servant of the Lord come that night to preach just as gallant. Every time they look at a track, they'd throw it on the ground and walk away. She was crying. She started to move. Said, I don't know what to do, Lord. And a little old boy with hair hanging down his neck, his daddy's suspenders on, an old pair of jean breeches, walked up and said, Woman, what are you giving away? She said, Honey, it's a track. Said, I can't read. Said, There'd be a little meeting over there tonight at the certain old livery stable. And that night, when the call was made, the doors were open. The old preacher and the woman was the only one there. He got up to preach his message that was burning in his heart. And after a while, that little old long-haired boy staggered into the building. That night he come to the altar. I don't remember, I believe that was Dwight Moody that sent a million souls to Calvary. Hallelujah! How do you know that God hasn't called you and you're forfeiting them blessings of God just because of pride and to try to act like the Joneses. I'd rather live in a haystack, drink branch water and eat salty crackers and stay in the call of God than to have chicken three times a day and live in a palace and have to miss the things that I have. Think on your ways as you go. Hallelujah. Yes, He's God. Think as I thought on my ways. What are you going to be, pretty little miss, tonight? 
Out here somewhere. Cheeks all painted up. Think you're something. One of these days that little farm of yours will rot and mold in the ground. Where's that soul going to be then? Think on your ways. What about you know it all? You men and women that thinks you're smarter than somebody else. Did you know God made the gospel so plain that even a fool shouldn't have? Yeah. Think on your ways. Think about Jesus Christ who was called a crazy man to bring this message of salvation to you. Think of the apostles that seal their testimony and come out of all kinds of big churches and was called heretics. Are you better than they? No, never by a million miles. You're not better than they. Think on your ways and turn your feet to Calvary. It's the only remedy that God has for salvation is through Calvary. Amen. Only thing that He has. It was Peter. When he heard the rooster crow three times, that he thought on his ways. For Jesus Christ had told him that a, such a thing would happen. And when he seen the thing that Jesus promised come to pass, he thought on his ways. And he went out and wept bitterly. There's some of you here tonight, and maybe on the grounds, some of these people who think this is a bunch of holy rollers, who thinks that the salvation of God is a fanaticism. And you see come to pass, night after night, the very thing that our Lord said. There'd be a sign given. It's possible that I go away. And I'll send the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. When He comes, He'll testify of me. And in the last days, the sign of Sodom will appear. Think on your ways while you look and see what Jesus said. As it was in the days of Sodom, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. And you see homosexual on the increase. You see the signs appearing. You see the angel of the Lord, the same one as that Sodom, right among us tonight working. He's called the Holy Ghost. The one that Jesus sent in His place. Jesus can't be here in body form, but He sent the Holy Ghost to take His place. To do the same works that He did. Think on your self-style ways. Think on that bunch of creeds that you're serving in instead of serving the real living God. Except a man be born again, he'll in no I see the kingdom of God. Amen. Think on your ways. Oh, you might be a doctor of divinity. I don't know what you are. But if you're lost, you better think on your ways. Amen. For there's a time coming. It was when the high priest counted out the 30 pieces of silver to Judas. When he heard the ringing of that silver, Judas thought on his ways. And he went and took a rope and hung himself. It was a Roman soldier that when he had stood there and seen the sun go down in the middle of the day, he saw the rocks ring out of the mountains. He heard one say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. He had pressed his spear into his heart and seen the water and blood flow out. When he seen that, he began to think on his ways. And he fell on his face and screamed and said, Truly, that is the Son of God. All right. Begin to think on his ways when he'd seen what he had done. You think of what you've done. Look at the evil. Look how you've put off Christ. You've intended to be a real Christian. You've intended to be filled with the Holy Ghost. You've intended someday, but your intention will never get you there. Hell's paved with good intentions. Brother, when you think on your ways, do the same thing the Roman soldier did. Cry out to God and say, truly, He is the Son of God. And I'll turn my feet to His testimonies. I'll live for Him who dies for me. As you see the Holy Spirit moving, working great signs and wonders, think on your ways. When you see the last sign that God said would take place as Sodom was before it was destroyed, when you see that, think on your ways. Think of what you're doing. If you are a Christian, think the life you're living. Are you living above reproach? Reproach. Are you doing the things that pleases God? Have your heart no condemnation. If you're a sinner, quiver under the power of God and come to the altar. If you're thinking on your ways while I've been preaching, if God has convicted you that you're wrong, then I can tell you one thing. I can introduce you to something at your tonight. For there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. 
where sinners plunge beneath the flood, lose all their guilty stain. That dying thief rejoiced to see that fountain in his day after he had seen the sign that he was the Son of God. There may I, though vile as he, wash all my sins away. Ever since by faith I saw that stream, thy flowing wounds supplied, redeeming love has been my theme, and shall be till I die. Then in an over sweeter song, I'll sing thy power to save when this poor lispering stammering tongue lies silent in the grave. Oh my, there's room at the fountain for every one of you. Think on your ways and remember while you're in your right mind. While you're here tonight, think on your ways and accept Jesus Christ while we pray. Would there be some in here that would have the courage that you're thinking on your ways before we pray? Would raise your hand and say, remember me, Brother Branham, as you pray. I've been thinking on my ways. They're not just what they should be. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. That's good. All around outside in the there I can see your hands way back in the back. Or the darkness. Raise your hand. Keep your heads bowed. Raise your hand. Say, Brother Branham, remember me, oh God. Lord, I'm not raising my hand to Brother Branham. I'm raising it to you. But I want him to pray for me. I believe he's told the truth. We should think on our ways. God bless you, sir. And as I thought on my ways, I turned my feet towards thy testimonies. Oh, God, be merciful to me. Would there be some more? Raise your hand. Saying, I'm, I'm a Christian, Brother Branham. But honestly, I've been thinking on my ways. The mission fields and everything is open. And here I am, sitting here doing nothing about it. I'm working in a factory just so we can get a few more dollars. I'm doing it. God bless you. God bless you. Your hands are going up everywhere. The Lord bless you. God bless you all around. I'm spending my time out here trying to make a little extra money or something. And souls are dying. And I, I really don't even, I don't do right before God. I don't even spend my money right. I give it for things of the world. Oh, come without money, without price. There to this fountain that's filled with blood. Several hundred hands has been up. Is there another now before closing? To, to my prayer. God bless you. God bless the little girl. Bless you, honey. God bless you, brother. God bless you, sister. Sweet little girl a few minutes ago as I was coming through the gate. She come and said, my name is Karen. She said, my mommy and poppy come down. She said, I got warts all over my legs. She wouldn't ask me to pray for her. I picked her up my arms. I prayed for God. I said, honey, that was the war, so leave you now. She looked over her little baby eyes, looked at me and said, thank you, sir. A little child. You say, that girl that raised up her hand, then she don't know. Yes, she does. It's the Holy Spirit that you're, wants to bring the child to the fountain while she's young and her little conscience isn't seared with old rock and roll and true story magazines and filth of the world. Let her plunge beneath the flood tonight, lose all the guilty stain. She's thinking on her ways. Dear Heavenly Father, at the close of the message, I bring to you these who have raised their hands. They are the trophies of the message. They come simple. They just raise their hands. It is written in the scripture, as many as believe was added to the church. As many that would be saved. And I pray, dear God, that your words will ring so in their ears just now and in their heart. We know our Lord said, no man can come to me except my Father draws him. And all the Father has given me will come to me. Sometime in our strange messages, we think, what did we do it for? Then we see sinners put up their hands. Then we know it's our Father working. We know that God has ordained that they should come. And they will come because Jesus said they would. Then he said, he that will come to me, I will in no wise cast out. He that heareth my words, I to preach it, Lord. And believeth on him that sent me, that's on the Father God. Hath everlasting life and shall never come into the judgment, but pass from death unto life. Something told these people to raise their hands. When they did, it was a spirit that spoke to them, said, you're wrong, raise your hands. And they broke every scientific rule. They raised their hands. Science says that gravitation holds your hands down. It shows there's a spirit in them that could break the laws of gravitation and raise up a hand. The same God that they raised it to was standing there to put their name on the Lamb's book of life. I believe it, Lord. Receive them. I may not be able to shake their hands in this life. 
But yonder on the other side, when the last sermon's preached and the Bible's closed the last time, my lips shall be sealed in death, my eyes closed, and I'll wake to worlds unknown. Yonder by the side of the throne, by the evergreen tree, let me meet them, Lord. Shake their hands over there. And they say it was at the Chautauqua that night, that Friday night, that I raised my hands and settled it forever, Brother Branham. So glad to be here. Lord, let it be so. I present them to you as trophies of the meeting. In the name of Jesus Christ, keep them, Father. Amen. The Lord bless you. I've got many sick people to pray for. I'd like to bring the altar call forth. But I'm going to take your word that immediately after this prayer line, that you're going to come up here at the altar, stand here after the prayer line is over and say, I'm so glad tonight that I accepted Jesus as my Savior. And do something. Go back in the room and pray and thank God for it. Thank on it now. Now, what was the prayer? He gave out the prayer cards yesterday, I believe it was, he said. And he didn't know it. We still heard. I don't know whether he thought of it or not, but we anyhow, we got... Prayer cards out was A's, and I tucked them up last night. And now, tonight we're going to take up the B's and A. B's 1 to, or 1 to 50. B's 1 to 50 is the one we're on tonight. Now, we want to line them up right this way, and we want everybody to be real reverent. It's a little early, I thought, but now we're going to... I'm, I can't say I'm sorry I kept you. The Holy Spirit, you're such a wonderful audience to speak to. I just can't hold, I don't know when to stop. It's just good. And I feel that feeds my own spirit. When I'm preaching, I feel good and strong. The prayer lines break me down. You see, that takes from me. This builds into me. So the Lord bless you. Believe now. Oh, everyone, keep your seat. Be real reverent for just a few minutes. We'll call these people up and pray for them. Now, B's, did you say 1 to 50? 1 to 50. Who has prayer card B number 1? Raise up your hand. Break your arm. You run and say, Doctor, heal my arm. <laughs> I got to finish my work out here. I'm driving some nails and I broke my arm. Heal it right quick. I got to finish that boards on the house. See? Why well, he'd say, you need mental healing. Well, that's right. See? He can heal it. He can set the bone while God does the healing. How many knows that's right? If you got appendix. It's bad. The doctor can cut that pendic out. But he cannot heal it. He can't heal. See, God is the only creator. How many knows that God is the only creator? Now, the devil can't create. The devil can pervert what God has created. What is unrighteousness? Is righteousness perverted. What is a lie? It's the truth perverted. See? What is an adultery? It's that act that God gives man and woman to live righteously, and it's misused. That's adultery. Same act, wrong way. See, that's adultery. Righteousness, unrighteousness is righteousness perverted. Is all there? What say? All but prayer card 25. Who has prayer card 25? Maybe it's a cripple or a deaf or someone. Prayer card 25. Who has it? B, 25. All right. Was that it, doctor? Or, oh, yes. All right. All right. 29. Well, we'll get you just a minute, brother. All right. B, 1 to 25. Maybe the person stepped out or they may not even be here tonight. These cards were give out yesterday, wasn't it, Paul? Yesterday. All right. B, 1 to 25, then 25 to 50. Let them stand. B, 25 to 50. Or faith. How many knows that? It's faith. Then without faith, you could not be healed. You have to have faith. Well, faith in what? Faith in a finished work that Jesus did for us at Calvary. How many believe that? Well, then as far as healing is concerned... It's already finished when Jesus finished it at Calvary. Is that right? Raise up your hand. Then what has to be done? Just you to believe it. You don't have to come to one of these meetings. You don't have to have even anyone to pray for you. Only thing you have to have is faith to believe it. Sometimes, now God, He's good God. Old Robert says He's a good God, and that's true. 
He is a good God. And yet he's more than a good God. He's a God of wrath too. Don't you think he's too good now that he won't, he won't keep his word? And he'll excuse you. He never does that. His holiness requires him to be just. He's a just God besides a good God. He's good, but he also requires justice. And his law requires him to be just. He must keep it. So then, he's also, he's a God of wrath. And now remember, when if you wouldn't take my word for it, I wouldn't take your word, that would settle it, but not God. God sends gifts into the church to still, to be sure that everyone will be without an excuse. Some of those gifts are, oh, well, there's, there's nine spiritual gifts that goes into every local body. How many believe that? First Corinthians 12. That's speaking with tongues, interpretation of tongues, and gifts of prophecy, and, and uh, discernments, and all the different wisdom and knowledge, and, and gifts of healing, and all that goes into the local body. And then there's five ministerial offices. How many believe that? Sure. And that's first, apostles, prophets, teachers, pastors, evangelists. How many knows that? Now, how can you say there's a pastor or evangelist without saying there's a prophet? How can you say there's a prophet when there isn't an apostle? See, some people like to say, oh, there's pastors and evangelists and teachers, but they don't want to say prophets. The same God said teachers, evangelists said prophets. He keeps his word. We don't pen knife it, just preach it. That's what it is. God's up, it's up to God to take care of his own word. Don't you believe that? Yes. Now, a prophet and a gift of prophecy is two different things. How many knows that? A gift of prophecy works through the church. A prophet is born a prophet. Jeremiah was born a prophet. Even before he's ever formed in his mother's wombs, God made him a prophet. Ordained him a prophet over the nations. John, 712 years before he was born, Isaiah saw him, a voice of one crying in the wilderness. Jesus Christ was a woman's seed from the Garden of Eden. He couldn't be nothing else but Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Moses was born a prophet. See Prophets are not made. It isn't laying on hands and giving gifts. It's something that God gave. God has set in the church. See? First, apostles, then prophets. Others are local gifts that goes into the church. Now, now, the Lord is with us, we believe, and will do these things for us. Now, Jesus one time in his ministry, now, he had the fullness of the Godhead bodily dwelt in him. How many knows that? The Spirit without measure. We have the Spirit by measure. But if the Spirit of, it, of God is in me, the same as in them, in Him, in you, it'll work the same way. It's the same Spirit, but not as much. It's the same Spirit, not as much. It's like a spoonful of water out of the ocean. It's the same chemicals as in the spoonful. There is in the whole ocean, but just not that much of it. He had it without measure. We have it by measure. All the fullness of God was in Him. God was in Christ himself, reconciling the world to himself. Now, all 50 there? All right. Okay. There was a woman one time in the meeting. She didn't have a prayer card, we'd say. She had a blood issue and she couldn't get to Jesus. There was too many around him. Everybody was pressing, hugging him and... As we'd say like this, good morning, Reverend or Rabbi. Oh, we're so glad to have you in our land today. How are you? Give me a little hug. Let me, let me pat you on the arm. Everybody. And a little woman seen she couldn't get close to him, so she crawled around till she touched the border of his garment. Is that right? Now, the Palestinian garment hung loose. Now, I wouldn't know if you touched my coat or his coat. And the Palestinian garment had an underneath garment and a loose garment a robe over the top of that and she just touched the border of it for she said within herself if I can touch the border of his garment I'll be made whole is that right? I'll be made whole now she had no scripture for it but she believed it so she touched his garment and she slipped off out in the crowd about like this perhaps and sat down or stood up or whatever she was Jesus stopped and said who touched me? and all of them said not me and Peter said He rebuked him. In other words, he'd say something like this. Lord, what are you talking about? Who touched you when they're climbing over one another to touch you? He said, but I perceive that I have gotten weak. 
virtue's gone from him. Somebody touched him with a different kind of a touch. Now that's the kind of touch we want to talk on just for a minute. Not the way you shake your hand, put your name on the book, but a touch that he can feel. Now, that little woman had a need. And he looked around over the audience. How many knows that he had the spirit of discernment? Sure, without measure. But he didn't know. Now, if he'd have known, he'd told the truth. He's God and couldn't do nothing else but tell the truth. But he didn't know who did it. But God was in him. And he looked around over the crowd till he found the little woman. He told her that her faith had healed her blood issue. And she felt in within herself that the blood issue had stopped. Is that right? Now, the Bible said Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Do you believe that? Does the New Testament say that he's a high priest right now that can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities? Is that true? He can be touched by the feeling of our infirmities. All right. Then if he is a high priest, the same high priest, and if you touched him, how would he act if he's the same high priest? The way he acted the first time. God can't act any way but what he does the first time because he's infinite. He's infinite. We're finite. We make all kinds of mistakes, but God, not him, he's everything that he does once that's perfect forever. He's God. He can't make a mistake and be God. So the woman touched him and he turned and told her. Now, if he's the same God tonight that he was then, the same high priest that can now, this hour, be touched by the feeling of our infirmities, he'd act the same way. Now, he's gone into glory. He's the vine. We are the branches. The vine doesn't bear fruit. The branch bears fruit. Is that right? You don't get fruit off the vine. You get it off the branch. Well, if we're the branches and he's the vine, then he furnishes the energy, which is the Holy Spirit. And if the Holy Spirit's from Him, it'll act like Him. Now, how many out there, there's, is there any prayer cards out in the audience? Anybody got a prayer card? Anywhere in the audience? Not a prayer card. Just so you'll see it, you don't have to have a prayer card. You have to have faith. Faith is the victory. Faith is what God looks for. Just have faith. Only believe. All things are possible. Now, each one of you out there that's sick and you don't have a prayer card, do you believe that you have enough faith to touch the border of his garment and glory tonight? Do you believe that? Raise up your hand. All around everywhere. Bless that little girl. A little bitty girl. Is that your child, sir? Is she sick? All right. You believe God can reveal to me what the child is? If she can touch his barter of his garment? If it is, you know whether it's the truth or not. I don't know you, the child. I've never seen you. You're just sitting there. Do you believe... How many audience will believe? That's a baby, just a little girl. She's standing there, both little hands up, waving at me, her little eyes looking. Now, there's something wrong with the child, I suppose. I don't know. God can reveal it. Will you accept it, sister? You all? Thank you, honey. If you're spiritual and God will open your eyes, look hanging about two foot above that child there. See that light? Now, here she is. There comes the vision. There's something that over her, it's her heart trouble. I see a doctor looking over her heart. She's got a heart trouble. If that's right, let the mother raise her hand. Put your hand over on the child. Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ, you're exposed. Your lying scheme is over. Come out of that child in the name of the Lord Jesus. We, the church of the living God, adjure thee by Jesus Christ to leave the child. Now, do you believe? Have faith in God. That man sitting right over there with his head down praying with that arthritis. Do you think God will heal you, sir, and make you well? Sitting out there on the end of the seat, kind of heavy set with a white shirt on. You believe God will take that arthritis away from you? That's what she's praying about. If that's right, raise up your hand. 
All right, now go home and be well. Jesus Christ makes you well. Do you believe it? Have faith. Somebody else pray. Have faith in God. Don't doubt. A lady sitting right back there looking at me. You're praying for somebody else. It's your brother. He's got polio. If that's right, stand on your feet for him. I don't know you and you don't know me. If that's right, raise up your hand. But you, there it is. You was praying for him. If that's right, wave your hand. The God that was hearing you has spoke to me and you touched his garment. That's the Holy Spirit working through the same way it did. Go and believe with all your heart and it'll leave you. Do you believe? Something's happened just at that time. Something else struck right in here. Oh, here it is. It's a woman sitting right here praying for one of her loved ones that's paralyzed. You believe that God will make them well? All right. You can go home and believe with all your heart and you'll find it that way. Amen. Have faith in God. Don't doubt. How about people in this section? You believe? You without? This is discernment. I'm just going to pray for these people. This is discernment. Have faith in God. Don't doubt. Believe with all your heart. Here. This woman's sitting right here, kind of heavy set. Got trouble with your eyes, haven't you, sister? They're going bad. And besides that, he told you you had trouble with your liver. Is that if that's right, raise up your hand, the doctor, that kind of heavy set guy. All right, go home and be well. Jesus Christ makes you well. Amen. Do you believe? Think on your ways now. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, who said as it was in the days of Sodom, when the angel of the Lord came down in a human flesh and discerned and said, Abraham, where is your wife? And she laughed behind him in the tent to herself. He said, why did Sarah laugh? Think on your ways now. Be right with God. Now this prayer line through there, you're all strangers to me as far as I know. But do you believe that the anointing of the Holy Spirit is up on me now as his servant? you believe that all down through the prayer line? Now you know if we take a discernment down this line, it would take a, oh, I just wouldn't get through it tonight. But will you believe if I'll pray with all my heart the prayer of faith for you? Will you believe with all your heart that you'll get well? Will you all believe it, each one? You will believe it. All right. Now let's pray for them. Lord, you, you, not only these, but them that's in the audience, may your spirit continue to go over this audience and heal the sick and the afflicted. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now you're in your wheelchairs. Stretchers. You look this way and you believe with all your heart. You think that your case is too bad, but it isn't. It just takes faith. No more faith than the heel of toothache. If you'll just believe it, let it be real faith. Believe it. Now, so it, uh, the anointing will get back to me. I want to, I, I want to just take, maybe I'll just catch her hand just a minute. I better take that for a vision. Look here. Leave me to be his servant. You realize you're very sick. You have cancer. (laughs) Look, lady. You've been to a doctor. You're extremely nervous. And you went to a doctor for something that would be cut off. It's off your back. And he said it was a mole. That was malignant. And it won't heal. It just keeps going on. It's still cancer. Let me have your hand. Here. Look here. You can tell. See that? Is there anything wrong with my hand? I'll take it off and put this other hand on. It isn't there now. By the grace of God and by His Spirit, I can make it leave you. But whether to stay away or not, that'd be up to you. If you can see it happen and go, because you can't live long, that's going right in your spine, you see. And uh, just run it right into it. So would you, if you could see it happen on your hand, would it increase your faith? You're young and you, 
you haven't very long to stay if God doesn't help you. Now, please don't think this. This is just something this woman, worse than really she thinks. Ever what the vision was, I know it's some kind of a power. Let's see. Now, you're looking at my hand. See how it swells? See how those little white things run over my hand? That's just like a, a vibration, like a... Called the Holy Spirit's on me. And death is on you. And life and death cannot associate together. Now look, you're just as much life in this hand as you was in that. You put that hand on. Now it's not there. See? It's not there now. Now I'm as much human as you. But see, it was his promise. Your right hand that you... Hold your right hand that you believe me to tell you the truth. My hand to God to my heart. See? Now put your hand on there and watch. Put your hand on there. Look at that. See? Now you see there's something going on there, isn't there? something unnatural. Now let's bow our heads a minute. This poor little woman, seriously. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that in the name of Jesus that you heal her. Let thy spirit move. She's watching my hand to see if those vibrations stop. She sees my hand swelling, turning dark, and seeing that there's something taking place. Help, O oh Lord. May the enemy leave her. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Just a moment. I've never looked, but it's still the same way it was. It didn't leave her. It didn't change, did it? It stayed just the same. Now, we don't ask God for miracles. It's not right to ask God. And remember, now you see that there's something happening to my hand. Now, when you move your hand, just take your hand off. Watch, see how it goes right back? I put, look how I put my hand on it. Don't act like that. See? And your other hand won't act like that. I just lay this hand back on there. And there it goes again. See? See, you're looking. That, that's right. Raise up this hand so the audience can see. You can see it yourself. Now I'll lay my hand on this desk right here so that you see it. It is a position where you lay your hand. Any words the same. Is that right? You're looking right at it. Now, Jesus said, In my name they shall cast out devils. Now you all help. Hold your faith to God. Uh, we, now, when it goes out, it'll come back. If faith isn't there, it'll meet it. For when the unclean spirit's gone out of a man, he walks in dry places and come back. You understand. But if you'll see that lead there, then you know you're going to get well. You'll believe it, won't you? You'll encourage it. Because you've had an awful time with this. Lord God, we do not ask for miracles. But you promise them, Lord. And that this audience and this little woman, the doctor has tried hard, Lord, to save the woman's life. He scattered this cancer. It's going into her back, into her spine. Darkness and shadow hangs over her. But you're here to heal her. She's watching my hand. She's watching for a move or something to happen. Let it be this one time, Lord. It will increase the faith of the people. We, I asked it not for no nothing at all, Father, but that these people might know that I'm telling them truth. And the commission that you gave by an angel who vindicated it to be the same, that said this would be first, and then you'd know the very secret of their heart, they would believe. Lord, we're living in a day when people are taught so hard against this, against you, against your word, against your spirit. They don't know what to believe. Let this little woman in this dying condition see the power of God. She's watching my hand. She's watching it to move. She's watching that sweating to leave and the vibrations to stop over. Let it be, Lord. Help me, I pray, that you, these others might see and take heed and know that God is still God. Satan, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, I charge thee, come out of the woman and leave her. Now, the woman's watching herself. Every vibration is left and it's normal. Is that right, sister? You're a heel. Go on your road to rejoice. There you are. She watched it herself and see God heal the woman. Now, do you believe? Everybody believe? Have faith now while we pray. Now come close, sister. That same anointing here. We stop for everybody. You know what would happen. Dear God, in the name of Jesus Christ, heal this our sister. Amen. I go rejoicing just like she did. And you believe with all your heart. Now see, it seems like, see, if you don't have a vision, it, it doesn't, 
It doesn't do it. Something happens. You see what I mean? How many understand? Now, that, that lady might have thought, well, the anointing was anointing. The anointing left him. The anointing didn't leave me. It's still here. Sure it is. You believe it? Here. You're this woman. I don't know you, do I? God knows you. You believe me to be his prophet? If I don't know you and God knows you, if God will reveal something about you that you know that I don't know, will you believe me? He's already believing. All right. You're suffering with the very cause things. That's right. And besides that, you're praying for somebody, which is your brother. And that boy is declared to have a mental condition. You don't believe it. And it's not so. He's just nervous. Don't believe it. You believe God knows who you are? If I'll tell you who you are by the Spirit of God, will it take every doubt from you? Miss Neville, go home. Be well. Jesus Christ makes you well. Don't doubt. Will you believe, sir? That shadow of devil of cancer will leave you from here. Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, heal the man, I pray. Through Jesus Christ's name, heal him. God bless you, my brother. Come, sir. You believe with all your heart? Just look at the look at the hundreds and hundreds of people are praying out there. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, heal our brother. Amen. Believe, brother, with all your heart. Come, sister. You believe now? Lord, as when the while the Holy Spirit is upon me and anointing me, may the precious God of heaven heal our sister in Jesus' name. Now go believing with all your heart. Look, sister. Look, sister dear. Raise up your hands and say, Thank you, Lord. Praise your name. That's the way to do it. Go on your road and, and God will make it right for you. That's the way. Go believe him. What do you think, lady? You believe? You believe me to be God's servant? It's caught you, you see. You realize something's going on. A vision caught me from the little woman. May God help me after this. The woman has actually got a hospital experience in front of her. That's right, isn't it? An operation. And that's for a child. It's a baby you're fixing to have. And the doctor says that it has to be a cesarean birth and for an operation. And you're wanting me to pray that it'll be a natural birth. If that's, is that right? Hold up your hand. That's thus saith the Lord. You're not from here. You're from a place called Worcester. That's right. Miss Winnie, go on your road and rejoice. God make you well, sister, and give you the joy. Let's all pray. Everybody bow your head now. Well, let's just worship the Lord first. Raise up your hands and praise Him. Say, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. God, we love you. We praise you. All be merciful unto us, Lord. Oh, Father God, grant unto us thy mercies. Give unto us the Holy Spirit. May people in the audience see that you're God. And these people be healed. Through Jesus' name, amen. Come to In the name of the Lord Jesus, may you go and be made well. Amen. Now as you come, I, the Holy Spirit is upon me, anointing me. Believe it now. Come now. And just as you pass through, I'm going to pray. All you be praying also now for these people. Lord, I lay my hand up on my brother. In the name of Jesus Christ, may he be healed. Amen. Go believe me. All right. Come, sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon her for her healing. Amen. God bless you, sister. Come now, sister dear. Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, May our sister be healed while the Holy Ghost is on. Amen. Amen. May God bless you. Come on. Lord, heal my brother and make him well in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I see that there's so many sitting safe and safe keeps going. All right, come. Are you scared? You believe God could tell me what was wrong with you? Then go in that asthmatic condition and leave you. Just go on and talk to you. Just come to me. Lord Jesus, in the Pray you and heal her and make her well. Amen. God of heaven, have mercy and heal our brother and make him well. Amen. Come believing now, every one of you. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, make him well. Amen. Now the Holy Spirit's on me. I'm just uh, laying hands 
The Bible said, These signs shall follow them that believe. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. In the name of Jesus Christ, I lay my hands upon my sister. May she get healed. Amen. Go believe in Come, little boy. I see your condition. You believe that I'm feet will straighten up when I have to pray for you. You believe in honey, Lord? Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, may there be such an improvement in this child in the next few hours till it be brought back to the meeting to show what God can do. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Come back. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, may my brother be here. Amen. Come, my sister. Oh, Father God, in the name of Jesus, may my sister be healed. Now, as you walk the platform, go rejoicing. You believe my Holy Spirit's still here. You believe he heals that heart trouble standing there? Just go rejoice and say thank you, Lord. You believe he heals his female trouble? Or just go off the platform and rejoice and say praise God. Lord, I pray that you will heal them and make them heal in Jesus' name. Amen. Come soon. Come believe me. Dear God, I lay hands upon my brother and pray that in the name of Jesus Christ that you will heal him and will make him well. Grant it, O oh Lord, for your glory, the salvation of God. Amen. Come, my brother. Oh, my. Well, of course, anyone might not know what it is. A man's blind. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You believe, sir? Yes, sir. Let's bow our heads just a moment. No heads, no eyes up. Lord, we do not ask for miracles. We do not ask for that. We ask for mercy, that the mercies of God and faith will be given to our brother, that the blind spirit that's on him may lead him. May the sight begin to break into his eyes at this hour. May he get completely well. For we ask it and cast out the blind spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. I want every head bowed, every eye closed for a moment. God, you hear my voice, say, look. Hold down. Look up towards me. Can you see my face? Put your fingers on my nose. There you are. All right. Can you see them lights out there? The sight's beginning to come to you. Yeah, I see the lights too. All right, raise your hand. He has his sight. He can see the lights. Put your hand on my nose and show me what you do. Come on, your brother Johnson. You shall have your sight. Let's, let's raise your hands and praise the Lord, everybody. Let's raise up your hands and say, Thank you, Lord. You believe God will heal that heart trouble? Go on your road, rejoice, and say, Thank you, Lord, for healing me. Come. Lord, I pray for my brother that you'll heal him and make him well. In Jesus' name, amen. Come, sister dear. Come rejoice me. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, heal and make well. Amen. That's right. Come, sister. In the name of Jesus Christ, heal and make well our sister. Amen. Come, my sister dear. Father God. In the name of your Son, Jesus, heal and make well our sister. Amen. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, heal my brother and make him well. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, heal my brother and make him well. Amen. The blind man has his sight and rejoices. Let's stand to our feet and rejoice in the Lord and say, Thank the Lord for his goodness. Are you thankful to the Lord? You believe God's still here? You believe the discernments of God is right? Amen. Oh, how wonderful. Are you the one you don't want to be prayed for? You believe me to be the servant of God? You believe me? You believe that God sent me for this purpose? Is it a witness to the people that God is God? You believe it? 
Do you believe? If I tell you what's wrong with you, you make it stronger? Your diabetes, you think it'd be healed? Yes. You're not from here. No, you're from Kentucky. That's right. You're here visiting. You got a daughter here in a city called Dayton. That's right. She's got a blood clot. You're praying for that. Your name is Miss Houston. That's right. Go back. Jesus Christ makes you well. You believe with all your heart? What about you in the wheelchairs? One woman's up. Everyone's up to one. Say. The lady laying there with her hand up. Over here on the wheel, over here in the chair. You with the hemorrhages there. You believe God will take them hemorrhages away from you? Have faith in God. Rise up to your feet. Jesus Christ will make you well. Get out of your stretcher. Believe that God is God. There she is on her feet rejoicing. Anybody else want to be healed? Stand on your feet, everyone.